Being a marketer is no sweat. You just have to manage dozens of channels, launch hundreds of campaigns, score thousands of leads, and... Okay, fine. It's a lot of sweat. Unless you have HubSpot's AI-powered marketing tools to help you do all that and more. Get started at HubSpot.com slash marketers. W-T-L-H It's time! W-T-L I think we got a show. Oh yeah, we got a show. W-T-L and welcome back, everybody, to WTL, Where's the Line, Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. I'm yours, D Klassen, and this week I am joined by the one and only, the J.O. The J.O., baby. Where, <laughs> not Jeremy. Where's the Line, Where's Jabron? That's the... <laughs> Where is Jabron? Uh, full full uh, disclaimer here. Jabron's a little under the weather. I think running that marathon, that half marathon, might have something to do with it. That'll do it every time. But tip of the cap, Jabron, you did it. You uh, completed the Lincoln Havsies, I think it was called. Um, it's uh, half more of a marathon than I've ever done. He's so. not the kind of guy I thought would run for fun. I'm going to be honest with right? you. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's kind of a big dude, you know, and he, he likes his, you know, his beer and everything else. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah, good for him. Yeah. Very, very good. But uh, uh, hopefully we'll get Jabron back in health and top notch uh, for next week. But right now it's Halloween. There's no rest for the wicked. Salem, Omaha, Kearney, Grand Island, it doesn't matter. So... <laughs> The show must roll on, as they say. Absolutely. This is as scary as it gets, then. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> taking my bets? <laughs> this is as scary oh, as it gets. Oh, my God. Uh, well, and I was thinking, well, how, how are we going to do a little pun, a little play on words here? Because you, you're talking about scary and it's Halloween, right? We're talking about the Jets. Oh, geez. We're ta- we got to start Thursday night football. The Houston Texans are heading up to New York, where they find themselves an underdog. To the New York Jets. This line opened up as basically a pick 'em. It has moved up to two. So if you are off the jet, you're you've board you got your boarding pass and all that, you're off the jets. Um, you're catching points. So maybe now's the time to go ahead and bet the other way. Uh, I know how I feel about this matchup. <laughs> Jeremy, uh, just uh, on the surface here, uh, Houston's catching two. What do you think? Well, you know why the line moved, right? I mean, Aaron Rodgers said he found the fountain of youth. Oh, he did? Yes. He's I didn't know He's now that. drinking cayenne pepper and water. Oh. Um, did he pick that up in the rainforest this, or wherever he went? <laughs> this just happened this week. Oh, okay. So why the line moved to two and a half, it's got to be because of that news. Rodgers <laughs> is going to be moving just a little <laughs> bit better this week. Honestly, why Why aren't you getting points with the Texans? Yeah. Uh, definitely not having that kind of sophomore slump at the quarterback position Ooh. or from this coaching staff. They look legit. Yeah. Uh, top down. Man, you're getting two and a half points. You got to take. I know it's a road game, but I still. don't care. Yeah, everybody that I hear talk about this, and and uh, you know, uh, your pundits on Prime Video, the game's going to be on Prime, like it yeah. always is. You know, they're trying to sell it, right. and so is the NFL, and so is ESPN, trying to get people to tune in, and they're all talking about, oh, this is a trap game, a classic trap game, and blah blah. blah. Like, no, the uh, it's a trash game. Right. The New York Jets are trash, and Houston's pretty good. They're two and six. New York is two are. Uh, are six and two. They're six and two. Houston six and two. The Jets are two and six. And no matter who they bring in there for Aaron Rodgers, his best friends, his best receivers, whatever. <laughs> tell me how the salary cap works. Just okay. But anyhow, yeah, just bring in Devonte Adams midstream. Doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter for this uh, for this game. I think Houston's going to cover that easy. And if, if if I can wait till you know third, you know later on this afternoon. And uh, maybe I'll get another point. Maybe we'll push it up to three. Well, that's the thing. Do you think it's yeah. going to continue to swing to the Jets? I mean, that's that's the trend. And they are an absolute dumpster fire. And and you just gave us some really good information. Would Would you say he's he's found some cayenne, cayenne pepper peppers? and water? Is it making his nostrils like clear out so he can breathe better? Yep, and he's moving like he's hasn't moved in six wow. seven years. Wow. So that total maybe that's maybe that, well then why is the total moving down? Because it opened up at forty three and a half. Now it's moved down to forty two on a lot of books. Uh, how do you like that total? I thought it'd move up if he can breathe better. I'm, you know what? I, 
I honestly like the the under on this, and I'm usually okay. not an under guy. Yeah, yeah. But I see why the number's coming down. But yeah, to your point, uh, if he's moving, I mean, maybe yeah. they'll actually score some points this maybe. week. <laughs> maybe, yeah, yeah. I kind of, I kind of like the under too. Uh, weather's not going to be nice around here, no. these parts, and it's getting to that time of year where it's never really nice up in New York. At least it's kind of cool. Um, even the the money lines at plus one ten for Houston. So I, I still like catching those points though. Uh, if you're going to do the, the our plus one ten. There, I, I just there's not there's nothing no redeeming qualities here for New York. I, they're out of the playoff race as far as do you do we really think they're going to win five in a row? No, you know, or, or four in a row to to make a run here? Absolutely not. They're out. I of mean, it. the they're Jets out are it. out of it. The Jets are. Uh, this is actually perfect for. Uh, NFL fans to have this game on Halloween, you know, not yeah. have to worry about anything. Yeah. Go trick or treat, go to your parties, yep. whatever you want to do, and then just kind of check in on the game. But yeah, there's no chance the Jets are going to go on that kind of run. They're not showing no. it. I mean, no. it's not like the team has the potential of it, you mm-hmm. know, and they've shown flashes of it. This yeah. is a team that hasn't shown you anything. Well, they, they showed me they had a chance to win a game, and Aaron Rodgers threw a perfect pass down the sideline, and Garrett Wilson dropped it. There you go. Like his only drop. Like, well, there, yep, there it is. That's, that's all you need to know. That, that's that's your season <laughs> in a nutshell right there. Yep. All right, I think we agree. We like Houston, probably leaning towards the under. Absolutely. All right, well, let's move on to a team that you know an awful lot about. We're gonna, This is going to be a noon kickoff on CBS. The Los Angeles Chargers are taking on the Cleveland Browns, and the Cleveland Browns have a new look to them. They are still the home dog. I'm looking at one and a half. So, you, once again, we have a road team that, I don't know, uh, betters are looking at. So this is my favorite game of the week. Okay. I, gonna, and Whoa. not because it's okay. the Chargers. You're, right. you're, you're looking at me going, oh, yeah, Charger fan, I'm sure. <laughs> well, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> this is my favorite game of the week because it's my Los Angeles Chargers against a team that is reborn. We were just talking mm-hmm. about the Jets, who were just mm-hmm. an absolute dumpster fire. Yeah. The Cleveland Browns with Jameis Winston at quarterback. Yes. With Nick Chubb at running back. Remember, he's mm-hmm. he's new to the team, basically. Yes. You yeah. know, just starting uh, the second or third game with the team. Mm-hmm. This is a Browns team ready to make a roll <laughs> and possibly even compete in the division. Okay. Uh, that may sound crazy. <laughs> that may sound wild. Not but, as crazy as Jameis. <laughs> <laughs> but I believed in the Browns before the season. Um, I believe in them now with the change at quarterback and the play on the field is mm. showing that that is okay. true. Uh, the defense is really good. I like the uh, the under in this. Okay. Um, the four, I, I'm seeing 42 and a half, 42 43, and a half you know, somewhere in there. Yep. Um, I don't think there's going to be a lot of points. You watch any Charger game and you know there's not going to be points scored. Um, even though this is a really good Charger team. We haven't had a team like this in quite a what, while. What is going on there? Because I was listening to your Bottom 5 podcast, you know, and, and you're talking Thanks about... Thanks for that. You betcha. Uh, check it out on anywhere fine podcasts are found, right? Absolutely. Uh, Herbert, your quarterback here, he he just turned in a plus 300 yards game, uh, moved <laughs> the ball up and down the field, but they didn't score a touchdown. No. Like, how does this happen? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, it's it's classic Chargering, where we've got Chargering. incredible Hall of Fame talent that can't quite complete the job. I mean, mm. Philip Rivers, he, he, he could write a book on him. Tomlinson. And the, Tomlinson. Um, it, it, you know, even Drew Brees, yeah. you know, when he was in San Diego. but. Uh, Herbert's keeping the tradition alive. He's having a heck of a year despite the injuries he's he's sustained. Uh, the running game is actually really good. The offensive yeah. line, not good. When our rookie left tackle isn't in the game, Joe Alt, incredible. Right. Uh, when he's in the game, he only missed one game so far. Okay. Amazing. I mean, incredible uh, increase in protection there. Um, you just Herbert. So you just talked about his passing game. He was our leading rusher last week. Yeah, um, yeah. He, he's off the charts. So this is a really good Charger team, special teams, defense, offense. They just don't score points. Right. It has to do with the lack of receivers and guys well, you can count on. <laughs> hey, last time we had you on was for the fantasy football you yeah. know, preview, and you said, who did you talk about, Lad? Lad? Lad McConkey. He's the leading receiver right now. He is. 376 um, yards, four touchdowns. Yeah, and a lot of that's because of the last game when he got 100 <laughs> yards. <laughs> <laughs> a third of his production came in one game. Yes, it did. And that's your leading receiver. Yes. Uh, this uh, The total has been bet up uh, quite significant, 
significantly since it opened up, net sitting at 42 and a half. Um, if I'm hearing you, you kind of like the under due to Cleveland Browns and their defense. I do yep. like their defense. I do too. And uh, for whatever reasons, Chargers are, what'd you call it? Chargery? They're chargering. Doing, chargering. They're yep. chargering. Yep. They're not scoring touchdowns. So should be in the dictionary. I kind of, it might be. I don't know. I haven't <laughs> looked at one of those in a while. Um, that might, that might be the best bet, taking the under. Now, especially since this line is moving up. Right. Um, you know what? I, I do like the Chargers to win this game. Uh, mm. Part of that's because of my heart. Yeah. You know, I you know I'm, I'm so you're Chargers. gonna stay away from this one, or are you gonna lay something down? On it? Yeah, I'm probably gonna <laughs> stay away from that. If anything, I'm just gonna take the under on it because the Chargers are just simply not gonna score points. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm probably gonna stay away from the line, but. I do, I do like the Chargers to win the game. Okay, well, I kind of like the home team, Cleveland Brown. Like you are saying, they're Let's resurgence, go. they're moving over. I think the weather might be a factor. And uh, say what you want about Jameis Winston, he's kind of fun to root for. Um, you know, you can't hate the guy. It, you just can't. No, I love him. <laughs> All right, real quick, let's talk about one of our uh, teams that we got a lot of fans of, a lot of listeners. Uh, the Denver Broncos are heading over to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. Ravens, nine point favorites. Ooh, this just got consensus bet up to nine and a half across most books, and most people are leaning towards Baltimore, thinking this is this is their mo, right? They beat up on weaker teams. They're getting Denver to come in to their place. Well, I mean, look at the Ra- I mean, the Ravens didn't they just lose last week um, in a in a dog fight? Yeah, um, they're they're in a position where they need to beat up somebody. You're right. This right. is their mo to kind of do yep. that. The Broncos haven't been that bad. I mean, their record's pretty good the, considering the, the record is pretty good yeah. considering their expectations going to see at least of mine. Uh, yeah, Bo the five Nicks, and three. Bo Nix, despite none of his teammates going to his birthday party, has yeah. started to become a leader. Uh, <laughs> You know, I like. It's a wild story. Thanks a lot, guys. I, I love the Ravens here. Yeah. Um, but I don't like that line. It seems a little high, doesn't it? Though. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I saw a stat earlier where uh, Lamar, when he's a, a seven-point favorite or more, he's like one in eleven against. Yeah. It's not good. It's not yeah. good at all. Uh, but the best bet might be the over here because this season the Ravens are seven and one. On the over, they are cashing on that over, and right now it's sitting at forty six and a half. It's just that does Denver score? Can they help them get there? They don't score. They but, don't. <laughs> but <laughs> with that being said, I actually don't have a lot of faith in that Ravens defense. So oh, this wow, is going to really? be one of those games where you know the Broncos are going to go into it and say, "All right, Sean Payton's going to get them." You know, ready to go. Yeah, yeah. And what do we have to lose here? This is a team that's sure. highly favored over us. Yeah. Let, let's just lay out the playbook and see what we can do. So, if they're gonna score points, this yeah. would be the game to do it. Maybe, yeah. Bo Nix roll out there, uh, naked bootleg, and just throw it down the field. See what happens there. You heard the horn. That means we're up against it. But we got to take a minute to recognize one of our fabulous partners, and that is the Nebraska Brewing Company. I feel a little bit like a cheater right now, but. <laughs> It's for a good cause, it right? It is a good cause. I mean, it, it's Halloween and uh, it's election season, and we got to be patriots. We got to get out there. We got to vote. We got to do all that. But what do we got here? Real American beer. Mm-hmm. This is uh, what is who? This is Hulk Hogan, brother. Let me tell you, <laughs> this is a real American beer. <laughs> Cheers to Real American Beer and, of course, Nebraska Brewing Company, world class in every glass. Don't go anywhere. This is. WTL. And welcome back, everybody, to WTL. You know what that stands for. Where's the line? Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. I'm yours, Andy Klassen, and I'm joined by Jeremy Odom. Jeremy. Oh, so good to be here. Yes, sir. I mean, it, it's Halloween. We had to do something, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This and, is the scariest face you could find. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, and you also got the Bottom 5 podcast going now. Yeah, Bottom I mean, 5 geez. podcast. The five, it's the reverse power ranking. Five worst oh. teams you will find in the NFL each week. Reverse power. Is that like weak? Like weak, you know, oh, you're, oh, you're yeah. powerful, you're weak. <laughs> I, I don't know. How, okay, okay. So it's the opposite. So uh, I did see my Chicago Bears, they kind of teeter. They're one of those teams that get in there and then they, then they get out of there. 
where they can you foreshadow a little bit where they at right now? Well, I will say that heading into this coming week, they are not going to be in the bottom Ooh. five. I'm just going to tell you that right now, but they are on watch. Yes, and that oh, is they because be. they couldn't complete the job. You got a guy, dan- was he dancing and taunting and whatever he's doing instead of playing football? Oh my god, people are calling that instant karma and all this. No, he was just talking trash to the crowd <laughs> while the play was going on, and then yeah. he missed his coverage. That's all that happened. I'm on record as liking the Bears this year. Right? You remember this. I do. I said I, I like them, but man, uh, yeah, what that is going on? Pretty, pretty embarrassing. But that's that's <laughs> Chicago bearing, I guess. Yeah, yeah bear down. Yeah, okay. Bear down. All right, but we got to get back into some NCAA football. We got a trio, a quad, quad, quadrant, quad, quadet, Sorry, quad, quad box, quad, whatever. Quad, yeah. We have four Big Ten matchups <laughs> that we want to get to here, and we're going to start with an eleven o'clock kickoff on FS1. That is the Minnesota Golden Gophers. The Fighting Flex taking on, still ranked, Illinois Fighting a lion eye here. This opened up as Minnesota being a road one-and-a-half-point favorite. Ooh. They are now a three-point favorite. This line is being bet up. What is going on? We have a unranked versus a ranked team. It's a home team that's the dog, and money's just pouring in on the opposite side. What do people know about P.J. Flex? Uh, game plan this week because this is well, silly. Well, maybe he just came off of a new Botox or something, and, and <laughs> he's looking really sharp. And they, and he's really good coming off. Of well, he's a, always looking sharp. Yeah, yeah. Let me let's just <laughs> throw that out there. Yeah. I don't know. I, I this one kind of boggles my mind a little bit. In fact, you know, before we went to air, I was like, wait a minute, Minnesota yeah, what's going is on a here? favorite. Yeah, yeah. Um, Illinois is having a heck of a season yes, and they has are. no reason to not look like the favorite in this game. Mm-hmm. I, I like them in this game. I like them scoring a lot of points in this game. Wow. Um, yeah, I don't know. This one kind of confuses me. Minnesota has piled it on, you know, yeah. as of late against some quality opponents, but I still yeah. I don't see it. I like Illinois. You know, yeah, it was a tough, hot game um, at home against USC if, uh, three weeks ago. Then they went on the road to L.A. and beat UCLA, and they're most recently coming off a really good beatdown of Maryland, 48-23. to um, on the other side of that, you have Illinois coming off a major beatdown, getting beat down by the Ducks of Oregon. Oregon's flying high, That's right? They're the doing their things. It is the Ducks. And, and it, obviously, when I said quality opponent, I, I, I was using that loosely. But yeah, you're making fun of Maryland there, and rightfully so. Yeah. Uh, it does feel that Illinois, maybe they're a little bit more battle-tested with games against, dare I say, Nebraska, Penn State, and Oregon. Uh, even Michigan. They pushed around Michigan a couple weeks ago. So I, I'm like, is there some injury news that I'm not aware of or what is going on? Because we saw Illinois firsthand. And, yes, they're a tough team. Brett Bielema's doing his thing, yep. right? And he's got a good quarterback this year. Uh, and I think that might be the difference. I can't believe Minnesota keeps catching these points. I did see an interesting stat, though. Uh, Minnesota is one of the best teams against the spread this season. They are 6-1-1 mm. and one against the spread. That puts them in the top five nationally as a NCAA team to bet on. Well, that's the kind of stats we need. I Yeah. That kind of changes everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all about what you did in the past. Yeah, right. Uh, right. No, I, I still, I still, even you know, after you say that, I, I still wonder if there's there is injury news that maybe we're not seeing or understanding because Illinois does appear to be a team that is more battle tested, mm-hmm. and Minnesota just kind of you know has a little bit of the flash against some lower opponents. Um, yeah, it, we're gonna see. I mean, these are two well coached teams, so it's like, all right, wh- you know, where do we go from here? But you know, their common opponent team is Michigan, and Minnesota lost to Michigan. Yep. Illinois beat Michigan. There you go. Don't know if you think it. Yep. All right, should we move on to a headliner here? Let's go. Another eleven o'clock. Kickoff. This is going to be a big noon kickoff. It is the number four team ranked in the nation, the Ohio State Buckeyes, heading up to play Penn State at Penn State, Happy Valley, uh, where we right now have Ohio State as a three point favorite. This line opened up at four, four and a half, so it's been bet down. People are liking the Nittany Lions at home. Both yeah, teams, uh, Penn State seven and zero. Here's the thing. I've got boots on the ground on this one. Two Ooh. years ago, I saw Will Howard perform in person okay. as the quarterback of the Kansas State Wildcats. Right. In watching this game, I did not speak to him, but I do know he's a heck of a player, and he was turned down from actually going and attending Penn State University, where he wanted You're to right. go. You're right. This is a revenge game. It has nothing to do with the game I saw in Manhattan, but... 
it's a revenge game for him. Mm-hmm. He's excited mm-hmm. about it. He's talking yeah. about it, which I don't know if that's a good thing or if it's because sometimes that can kind of overshadow. I just hope it doesn't come down to a clock management thing for him. At the, <laughs> <laughs> a little burn there. Uh, it, it does feel to me that uh, Ohio State, they always have the superior talent. Yes, they do. Um, always. But, and I don't know which coach I love to hate more. Is it James Franklin or is it Jason Day? I don't I don't know. Uh, I do like Penn State at home here. Um, I, it makes sense to me that this line is getting bet down. Yep. I think it might get even closer to that. If I can get, I'd really like to wait and see if I can get that at two and a half before I jump in on uh, Penn State. I'd love to I say. I think that hook is huge here. I'd love to say that Nebraska kind of showed the way and a right. better uh, you know, a better team is going to put that to use and yeah. take care of business. So, yeah, I like Penn State at home as well. Pro- I'm, I'm going to assume it's going to be some kind of whiteout or something. But, uh, yeah, no, I, lo- I love Penn State here as well. Get the points. Yeah, Aller just needs to be a little bit more accurate with screen passes for Penn State. That's all that has to happen. <laughs> That's there, all you right? got to do. <laughs> 45 and a half is your total. Are you thinking this is going to sky over? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Over? Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I think the over. Score the points, baby. The over does feel like the play there, doesn't <laughs> it? All right, I think we we agree there. We both think the hook is big, and we kind of like Penn State at home. Absolutely. Uh, but I I, I heard uh, that presser from Will Howard, too, and he is he's still kind of carried. He's carrying that with him that Penn State overlooked him because he's, he's a local guy, right? He's a local he's guy, and this is, he's kind of yeah. got that chip on his shoulder, and it almost mm-hmm. seemed like— it almost makes you wonder if uh, part of where he went in the transfer portal, you know, who's right. playing Penn State, yeah. where, where can I get back oh, at him? It's like, oh, this this is going to get ugly. Oh, so this is kind of like the the Houston Cougar mascot when he saw that when he saw the Oregon Ducks were going to be on the schedule, he <laughs> yeah. purposely went out so he could tackle the duck in pregame. Is that <laughs> exactly yeah, okay? It's a mascot. Right on. <laughs> Speaking of the Ducks, we are going to move to a two thirty kickoff on CBS. The number one Oregon Ducks are heading on up to. Ann Arbor, Michigan, to take on the Wolverines. And boy, oh boy, are they catching a lot of points. 14 and a half over two touchdowns. Wow. Your Oregon Ducks. And this has been bet down from 15 and a half. That's wild. Um, well, the the mighty have fallen. I mean, they are your, uh, you know, your the defending, defending national, national champs. champs. But boy, did they lose some parts, and they lost a lot of guys to the NFL. They also lost their coach to some team in the NFL, I think. Um, and Hello. so, <laughs> who's got it better than him? <laughs> yep. So nobody. Uh, Michigan's kind of going through it right now, and here they find themselves over a two touchdown home home dog. You know, it's the thing. Oregon Ducks, they appear to be on path to another national title attempt. They do, yes. It it does appear. 8-0, yep, looking real good. This is a front runner. This is a team that can score and score quickly. They've Mm -hmm. always been really fast. Yep. Michigan, uh, it does appear that that this is um, not going to be a defense of the national title, at least at this point. No, no. Um, no, no. So, yeah, despite being at home, they do have quarterback issues. Um, I I like Oregon here. I I think the 14, 14 14.5, whatever you're seeing, is probably low. Really? Um, I like Oregon taking... Give take them, them to the woodshed. Yeah, even if it gets yeah. up to like 16, you know, take or take yeah. Oregon here. You know, and, and uh, CBS really wants to pump this thing up because they're catching a lot of uh, flack, catching some mud here, letting the SEC contract go to ESPN, and yep. ESPN's just breaking record over record, <laughs> <laughs> you know, featuring these new SEC matchups, you, you know. Uh, so I, I do think CBS is really going to pump this one up, and it's going to give Oregon a chance once again to make a statement. And winning by over two touchdowns, that's nothing new for for, for Oregon. Uh, Early in the season, I think people thought, what's going on here? What's going on here? They're only winning by two touchdowns. Right. Uh, Now they got right. Gabriel looks like, you know, your Heisman finalist, like we all thought he would be. I I probably like Oregon covering this as well, even though it's a (laughs) really big spread here. Is the total the safest bet going over 45 and a half? You know, that's the thing. Michigan doesn't score a lot of points. No, and, they don't. And they continue to have issues at the quarterback position. It's like, are they going to be what kind of hinders that over? Because mm-hmm. Oregon's not going to be the problem. I'd almost take, I mean, especially if the number climbs any more than, where are you seeing? 45 and a half? 45 and a there? half, yep. Yeah, I mean. If this it, line hasn't moved much at all, really. Yeah, it's, it's be, staying tight. And, and I don't know that I would even take the over on it just because I'm mm-hmm. worried about Michigan. Yeah. 
Okay, well, they are coming off a rivalry win, 24-17 to over Michigan State. So, uh, But the week before, they only scored seven against Illinois. There you team go. team we already talked about, and yep. that's why we kind of like Illinois there. All right, real quick, let's get into this Wisconsin-Iowa matchup. It's in Iowa City, and your Hawkeyes are three-point favorites over the Wisconsin Badgers. There's been so much pub over Wisconsin the last month or so, but, oh, they hit reality having to play <laughs> Penn State last week, losing 28-13, to all that, oh, they found an offense. Offense. Oh, their passing game. Yeah. Uh, that kind of went away after Penn State took care of business. Yeah, and you know, and Iowa's Iowa. You know, they the, scored forty last week against Northwestern. Yeah, the yeah. offense is yeah. far improved. The defense is really good. Special teams is great. They're obviously going to be well coached uh, at home. Yes, they're very good. Yeah, they are. So I do like Iowa three points uh, in this game, um, and I <laughs> it's the you know it's the the over under mm. that I'm kind of looking at, but the forty and a half. Uh, yeah, but it, it's it's low, um, but it should be low because it's an Iowa home game. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I I like Iowa. I like the three points. I I don't think mm. there's any issue there. Really. Mm. You're disagreeing mm. is what I'm mm. yeah, suggesting here. I, I, I just hate backing Iowa. This is a 6.30 kickoff. It's on NBC. They're going to have a, all the lights. And uh, you're talking about your your Los Angeles Chargers chargering. Yep. I feel like Iowa, this is like a 9-7 to seven win. Okay, so you get the win, but you don't cover, and it's, uh, it leaves everyone frustrated. But that's the thing. <laughs> the, you know, the reason why I can feel comfortable saying, because I, I don't like back in Iowa, no more so than anybody. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. reason why I can feel comfortable doing so <laughs> is because it's, it's spooky season. Oh, okay. I it mean, is it's, Halloween. It's, it's Halloween. It's Halloween. You know, this game does take place after Halloween, but it's that spooky season, and sometimes right. you got to do some scary things like taking Iowa. Hey, <laughs> give, all right, let's give Iowa the nod there. They do have a kind of an ugly loss to Michigan State a couple weeks ago 32 to 20 but that was on the road we can forgive that uh and halloween gives them the nod we still like the under though don't we at 40? Yeah, absolutely. 40. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> it can't be scarier than that <laughs> well, let's take a quick minute to recognize one of our fabulous partners and that is the stock and rod company an outdoor lifestyle brand for those seeking adventure whether it's hunting fishing hiking they got you covered visit stockandrod.com to get your wild game on don't go anywhere this is W T L. And welcome back, everybody, to W T L. Where's the line? Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. I'm yours. And D class and joined by Not your Brian. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty good, JL. Thank you. Jeremy Odin. I mean, you, this guy, you're a comedian, you're a sports writer, you host a couple shows. Yeah. Uh, where can folks find you at? Oh, you can find me on uh, on X Twitter at JL from Nebraska, or you can find me and pretty much any social at the uh, Laugh With Me podcast. And check it, check and see if that uh, handle, Not Jabron, see if that. That's still open. So I'll you, take you it. Might, yeah. You might need to, you might, that might be some gold there for you. I don't and know. I'll it's send easy. out all bad barley <laughs> offers. <laughs> Dig. To counter. No, to counter. <laughs> okay, okay. Gotcha. Jabron's got gold for you, but I will offer the bad ones. And Jabron was on a little bit of heater. He hit a couple of those uh, main parlays in a row there that we put on the show. That was yeah, good, no, good no, stuff. You, good stuff. You've got to follow yeah, what Jabron's yeah. giving you. Well, let's start with some. Um, NCAA college football. We got to get into the Huskers, of course. But first, I thought we would get to a fun game that a lot of uh, folks across Nebraska are going to have their eye on. It's a 2.30 kickoff on ESPN. The Texas Tech Raiders are heading on up to Ames, Ames, Iowa. Where did, did you know the Cyclones are undefeated? They are ranked 11th in the nation, and they are 7-0, 4-0 in the conference. And they are your 13-and-a-half point favorite over the Red Raiders. Is it possible to be 11th in the country and be very quiet and very underrated? I mean, it especially at the end of this end of October. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, you're just not hearing a bunch of noise out of them, but they're undefeated. Right. They definitely have they, they have a legit shot at the playoff. Oh, of course they do. Holy they, cow. They have a legit shot to just go ahead and win the Big 12 outright, and then there is no case to be made to keep right. them out of the playoff. You know, I, I just think their head coach caught so much flack the last couple of seasons, mm-hmm. you know, whether you believe in that or not or what, whatever, but... Uh, now you, it's kind of a self fulfilling prophecy. Like, oh, they'll trip. Oh, they'll trip. <laughs> We're seven games in, and they're they're still haven't dropped a game yet. And this line did open up at fifteen and a half, so it's been bet down to thirteen and a half. I feel like that's a huge, huge half point right there. 
I think I like Iowa State by two scores. I do too. I, Iowa State's going to win home. this game for sure. It's at home. Uh, yeah, it's just a matter of are they going to win by two touchdowns. I love them winning by two scores, uh, which could mean a touchdown and a field goal. So that 13 and a half to me seems high, but I like them. I like them to win. I like them by that. Uh, here they, they have one common common opponent, okay. and that is Baylor. Two weeks ago, Texas, Ta- Texas Tech lost 59 to 35. Three weeks ago, Iowa State won. 43 to 21. Oh shoot. Okay. So if you're looking at common opponents and, and things of that nature and how how they measure up versus each other and ESPN Analytics is giving Iowa State an 81 and a half percent chance of just winning this game outright, but uh, I love that it got bet down to under 14. So I love that hook at 13 and a half. My jump at that right now. 13 and a half seems like gold. Uh, it's just a matter of how many points are going to be scored in the football game then. And, yeah, that that's what it really comes down to. And shout out. We love to do the Nebraska shout out. Ben Bramer from Pierce, Nebraska. Let's has go. 10 receptions, 179 yards, and one touchdown. Averaging 18 yards per wow. reception. Good for him. The old Blue Jay uh, hailing out of Pierce, Nebraska. Enjoying one hell of a season. Some people are saying Iowa State is undefeated because of him. Uh, yeah, and they're not using him right. They need to get him more involved in the passing game. <laughs> yep. Hell of a blocker. Hell uh, he of has... a blocker. <laughs> <laughs> Glue guy, gym rat. Yeah. Uh, he has put on some weight, 6'7", 250 pounds now. So Did you just call uh, him fat? Did you just fat shame him? No, no. I'm saying he's put on weight in a good oh, way. Oh, In a <laughs> good way. With you. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Get me in trouble here. I know some people in Pierce. Bring the heat. <laughs> no, congratulations. Congratulations to Bramer on a hell of a season thus far and the team. That's awesome. Uh, and and I like him. Uh, real quick, this total, 56 and a half. When it gets that high, I get a little leery, even if I do think it has a really good chance of going over. Yeah, I mean, this game, they're going to be running, right? I mean, this is going to be one of those games where <laughs> yeah. score, score, score. It's going to last four hours. Uh, but 56 and a half, if you're putting your money on the line, I'm going to take no go. Iowa, Iowa State's last game, they beat uh, Central Florida 38-35. Uh, Tech's last game was against TCU. They lost thirty-five to thirty-four. Mm. So I mean, those easily would have covered this, yeah, right? Would've. Both both games would have. So you can see why it's jacked up so high. Yep. And this is the Big Twelve. It's the right? Big Twelve. So uh, I wouldn't call you crazy to to take that, but yeah, I get a little leery there. I think the the safer bet, the more prudent bet, would actually be Iowa State winning by two scores. <laughs> this, if you take crazy. the over, it's a it's going to be a fun Saturday afternoon for you. Right. You're going to be <laughs> you're going to get <laughs> begging yep, for points. That two thirty <laughs> slot, yeah, that might be your last one. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's talk about another 2.30 kickoff on BTN. Welcome to the the league, UCLA. You're taking on the Huskers in really one of the first games that feels like fall. A real good chance of rain. Uh, Temperatures have plummeted since Wednesday afternoon. Cool out there today. Your Huskers are 5-3, and and they are your 6.5-point favorite at Memorial Stadium. The total has been bet down significantly to 39 and a half since it opened at 42. What are your initial reads here, Jeremy? Well, you know, the Huskers riding high off that huge upset over number four. Ohio. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. 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 If the refs can get a spot right. No. Yeah. I, I, I'd I, love to say um, this is a spot that Nebraska is a shoe in to get that sixth win that has just been hard to get. Um, Aren't they like 0 and 7 with the bowl game on the line? Yeah. Yeah. And this is Rule's 20th game. Oh, man. You'd like to say, I mean, and honestly, you want to say this is the game because it may not happen, right? Right. I mean, the schedule doesn't play out very favorably. Uh, Yeah. Uh, uh, Ty Robinson was uh, at the podium earlier this week, you know, for the players' press conference after practice. And he said, oh, this feels like a tipping point, or we're right at the tipping point. It's like, how many times have we said that yeah. in the last 15 years? Like, oh, you know, it looks so good, and, you know, against Ohio State. It still didn't win the game. No. Nope. Okay, and I know it was a top five team and it was on the road. Uh, but now you got to come back and you got to show that type of energy, that type of effort at home against UCLA. Everyone's telling you you're going to win by a touchdown. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, Indiana kind of showed you that maybe you shouldn't take teams lightly. Can we open up the playbook a little bit to show we can score points? I, I love screen passes. We're gonna win, so we're gonna win by a touchdown. <laughs> but then the over under is what thirty nine and a half. Yes. So yeah, that's tricky, isn't it? It's a it's, it's a tricky. fun little game we're playing here. But that's the thing. If we already had six wins, and then what happened last week against Ohio State happens, yeah, I'm excited. And right. this is like you're right, the tipping point. We're heading in the right yeah. way, you know. But we didn't, and six and a half. 
six. It seems really high for me. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I want, I'm going to root, you know, Nebraska all day Saturday. I'm going to wear my red. I, I yeah, want yeah. to celebrate after. It seems like a lot of points. <laughs> it, it does for me. And I said it earlier on Nebraska football now on News Channel Nebraska. I'm like, Nebraska gets the win, but they don't get the cover. Yes. Uh, I think we, we do, you know, you do those predictions. I said like 17 16. Right. You know, it's going to be a thriller. They're going to have to fight, scratch, claw their way to a victory. They haven't, been, they haven't done it the last seven times that this scenario has been presented to them. What makes me think that that's going to change? Well, uh, I do think it, they can win this game. They should win this game, yep. but they, they, I just don't see the cover. The total, it's enticing because it's been bet down to that 39 and a half. I, I, I'm starting to kind of like that because Nebraska, you know, uh, at times they've been able to score points, just not the last three or four weeks. We haven't seen it. It just seems like early on in the game, our offense looks like all right. We've got something figured out here. We've mm-hmm. got we've got a yeah. great game plan. Mm-hmm. We're going to put together points. You know the field's opening up for us, and it doesn't take much then for that to kind of flip on us, right? Um, and I don't know if that's just credit to the defense, you know, on the other yeah. side, but um, it's not hasn't really worked out for us. I I like the under only because I mm-hmm. don't I, and I want to take the over. I want the offense to open up. Right. I want to believe. Yeah. Um, but that, that, just... The first half against Colorado was so long ago, and that's yeah. turning into a really good win. Colorado is actually one of the best teams, uh, most solid teams yep. to bet on uh, against the spread. I think they're like six and two, uh, put them in the top ten. Yeah, they're six and two against the spread this season, putting them at the like the number. F- they're the tied for the third best team, solid team to bet on against the spread. They're also ranked. So uh, you know Nebraska can do this. It's just that we haven't seen it over the last month, even when they had. Things kind of looking, feeling good about Ohio State. Uh, I don't think any Nebraska fan out there ever thought real, like 100% confident, like, oh, all right, we're going to go to the shoe and we're going to win this thing. Never. No. No. And no. then as soon as they did get up by a couple of points, Ohio State's like, all right, enough of that. They just drove right down the yep. field. And it was. And they just back, answered you know? right away yeah. as if yep. that was the game plan all along, you know? Um, no, I don't know. It shows it's... shows like the defense played so well, but when in, in the same thing happened last year, for whatever reason, at the end of the game there would be a breakdown, and it didn't matter what offense it was. Maryland, Michigan State, it didn't matter. That offense drove the entire field and got the the need score, the go ahead score, and we saw it last week. I mean, albeit it was Ohio State, but it feels more like a mental thing, mm-hmm. and you can't really quantify that, and it's really tough to uh, looking at sports books. But that's what this is. This breaks it down to numbers, and I don't, I I'm I'm almost surprised that the numbers being bet down. It's almost like Nebraska fans have said, "Nope, <laughs> we're not taking we're not the cheese. We're not taking the cheese. We're you know, betting this sucker down." I'm happy you brought that up about Ohio State because it never even occurred to me that we were the potential trap game last week mm-hmm. as they were looking at Penn State at right. Penn State this week. Yeah. When did Nebraska become the trap game? Oh, was this like is <laughs> eight years ago or something. <laughs> yeah, something but like mentally <laughs> I can't like overcome that we're now the trap game. Yeah. Uh yeah, we, we can't allow that. Like, come on guys. Let's let's go beat up UCLA. This is the game yeah. to get us to six, to get bowl eligible. Right. Uh you know, and go ahead and do some folks a favor and win it by seven. And get yeah, that I mean the, and the 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 money line's minus two fifty on Nebraska. Womp womp. Don't like that. Nope. Uh, the total has been bet down to thirty nine and a half. We still probably like the under. I mean, Nebraska ten seven. All right, wait, wait. Excuse me. Seven points two weeks ago. Seventeen points the week before. Uh, Ohio State's defense different. I yeah, get it. Yeah. Um, but still. That's just not a lot of points, and you can't have a lot of faith in that. Uh, UCLA did put 35 on Rutgers last week, though. Oh. So it's right there. Oh, it's right there. Jeez. Well, you heard the horn. That means we're up against it, but let's take a quick minute to recognize one of our fabulous partners, and that is the Nebraska Brewing Company, world class in every glass. We got, a, we got this uh, in honor of Gibran. The Nebraska, <laughs> the official beer of the Nebraska Marathon, Squeeze the Day. It's their Lemon Rattler. Wow. It really, it is a really good You know what, congrats, Jabron, for completing yep. the marathon. It, more than I could have done. And yeah, maybe his body just needed a little time off. <laughs> yeah, right. <it> so <laughs> we got you, Jabron. Uh, Nebraska Brewing Company, world class in every glass. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. This is WTL.
And welcome back, everybody, to WTL Where's the Line, Nebraska's first and only sports betting show. I'm your host, Andy Class, and joined by J. Oh, the J O Jeremy go. from Nebraska. Oh, oh, oh. Jeremy, are we hanging in there? Oh yeah, talking ball, loving it, having beers. This yeah. is a beautiful Wednesday right. or Thursday, I guess. That's how we got to do it? That's <laughs> how we have to do it. You're filling in perfectly for Jabron, who's a little under the weather, but uh, it's Halloween. Scary things happen. Spooky things happen. Uh, and we're not immune to it. This is WTL. No, you so. see ghosts all the time. You see it on the football field. You <laughs> see it here in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be talking about that young man here coming up. He's got the Sunday night game. But first, got to start with a NFC North matchup. That is the Detroit Lions taking on the Green Bay Packers. 325 kickoff on Fox. Detroit, you're home. You're home. Uh, uh, excuse me, they are your road favorites by over a field goal, three and a half. You don't see that very often no, in the NFL. No, you don't. And it's a divisional game. Yeah, this is, uh, and I'm, sh- I, I'm sure there's some stat that says the Packers haven't been this big of an underdog, you know, at Lambeau Field in mm-hmm. X amount mm-hmm. of years or whatever. But, mm-hmm. man, the Lions are on an absolute tear right now. I like the Lions. They're 6-1, and 3-0 and oh in this division. Yeah, that's, uh, you know what, in the NFL, that generally means they're going to lose. This yeah. is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that usually spell disaster? So you like that plus fi- plus one fifty money line on Green Bay? Then <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> it just seems like one of those things. The Lions can't do any wrong. Uh, I honestly feel like they could have dropped eighty uh, sure. last week, oh. but they could do anything. How about week. that game against uh, the Dallas Cowboys? That just got wild, right? You know that that was so weird, and Dallas was just taking it like fine, fine, win by forty. We don't care. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, yeah it was weird. Yep, they were ready for a day off. Uh, I guess that's the thing when you, and I think the Cowboys are quiet quitting right now. Is that uh, what's going on? They're out there. They're working. Huh. They're getting paid, but they yeah. quit. But now the okay. Lions uh-huh. look incredible. They do. Um, I That's like, why they're a favorite here. Exactly, and I love their uh, their kind of like roll into winning this division for sure. But if there's a team that's going to stand in their way right now, and it's not the Vikings, mm. it's the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, at home, they've got to take care of business. So, I don't know. This seems like one of those. It does feel, and, you know, both quarterbacks have that red Q by their name. You know, they're both listed as questionable. Yeah. Love was kind of banged up, dinged up uh, last week. Yep. But we've seen that before. Yes, we And have. Packers typically find a way at home. I hate the Packers. I'm a Bears fan, but uh, give credit where credit's due. It does feel like one of those games where I think the hook really plays into this. This line opened at three and a half. It stayed at three and a half. Over a field goal on the road. I don't care who you are, yeah. right? And it's a divisional game. It's a divisional game. It's going to be close. I, I think so, too. Uh, this total is just like the the point spread here. It hasn't moved much at all. 48 and a half is your total. And that's the thing. It's going to be a close game. It's mm-hmm. I don't know what the weather's going to be like, but we're heading into that time of year where it's probably. I mean, it's chilly. Going to be chillier Lambeau here. I'm sure field. it's going to be in Lambo. Yep. Um, it's going to be one of those things where the score is going to be at a at a premium. So I don't know. I I kind of like the under or around that line. Forty eight seems a bit high right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably forty eight because. The Lions are uh, offensively unstoppable, but this is. They are putting up the points. They are putting up the points. This week, that changes. This is classic (laughs) NFL. Yeah. Classic NFL. Uh, Partly cloudy, uh, 53 degrees at kickoff. That's beautiful. What does partly cloudy mean? Does that mean like there's. There's There's going to be some clouds out there. There's just going to be a few clouds. Yeah. Some. Um, Simpsons. (laughs) <laughs> the Simpson sky. That's a partly oh, cloudy yeah, oh, sky. Okay, yeah. that's a partly cloudy sky. <laughs> All right. I, I kind of I don't like the hook here, so that's why that three and a half is keeping me away from Detroit. I, I like Green Bay as well, um, and the, I think the the bookies got that just right. And we, that's why we haven't seen much movement on the total nope. at forty eight and a half. Should we move on to Sunday night? I've been waiting all day for Sunday night, honestly. You, just like the song. <laughs> You've been talking about seeing ghosts. We are going to be talking about the man who's been having a really nice season, Sam Darnold, who's uh, infamous, 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 how do you say that? Famous, but infa, infa, infamous. 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 Lee said, I'm seeing ghosts out there. And it looked like he was seeing ghosts out there when he played for the Jets, but 
seems like that happens to everybody that plays for the Jets. <laughs> Regardless, they are your five-point favorite at home against the Indianapolis Colts. Indianapolis Colts are still at 500. They're 4-4. Four and four. Vikings are 5-2, and two, and I think they have a share of the division lead, or they're a half game behind um, um, Detroit right now. Detroit, yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing. The, the big uh, change in this, I would have said, this is Minnesota's game 100%. They, they look like the better complete team, but mm-hmm. uh, the Indianapolis Colts, Sunday night football, quarterback change, yeah. Joe Flacco is back. Are you sure? Yeah, I- Anthony Richardson's been benched. I, I thought they. I thought I just saw that Richardson was going to say like, "No, I'll, I'll play again." I thought that he said he was. Oh, are they are they skipping that? Are they bringing it back? I don't know where they're at with this. I thought I thought I saw that Richardson was going to try and be the starter again. Wow, but I don't I mean, know why would I he? like Flacco? I do too. You know? What? Yep. <laughs> I don't like Flacco long term. No, but when you're an NFL quarterback and you're a guy entrusted, you're a professional athlete, and mm-hmm. you're. I mean, look at Bron's out there doing marathons, and yeah. Richardson can't. Play a full football game without getting winded. Yeah. So no, I I like Flacco here, and if it is Flacco versus Sam Darnold on Sunday Night Football, that's must must watch TV on NBC. <laughs> it sounds like it. And uh, you know, I think it's going to be closer than that five point spread. Well, you would agree with the betting public because this line opened up at seven; it's been bet down to five. Yep. Uh, but the total is staying there at forty six and a half. Hmm. Sometimes that Viking offense really clicks. Yeah, it sometimes does. It doesn't. Though. And sometimes <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they have a. You know. Oh man, they. But they're. Last month they've always scored over twenty. You know, I think their lowest output was against the Jets, twenty three. Okay. But they still won that game. But they still won the game. They still yeah. won the game. No, this is this is a decent Vikings team that when you started the season you were a little concerned because you lost your, you know, first round draft pick, a quarterback. Yep. Yep. You had a couple guys on defense die. And that's just that's where some of the things you had in the plans mm-hmm. weren't coming to, to fruition. But uh, Sam Darnold, I mean, you put a veteran quarterback in there. The Ghosts yeah. are still in New Jersey. Yep. Yes, and, they are. Uh, they're in the Meadowlands. They're having obviously. a heck of a season. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I like the Vikings here. I don't like the five. Uh, I think I can get on board with that. Uh, your matchup predictor on ESPN Analytics kind of has this at almost a toss-up. 52% chance Vikings should win this game at home. So wow. doesn't that tell you that should be closer to a yep. three-point, two-and-a-half-point type everything. of spread? Um, also, this is a record-breaking season in the NFL up to this point. 67 games up to this point, up to this broadcast, have been decided by seven points or less. That is an NFL record. Holy cow. So right here, when it's when it's almost at that toss-up range, yep. uh, as far as analytics go, and we're, we're still seeing uh, north of four and a half, sitting at five, I like the Colts to cover here as well. Yeah, that, that makes that five seem ridiculous, honestly, Doesn't when you that, tell me that stat. Yeah, a couple Holy of those cow. things there, yeah. <laughs> well, let's move on to Monday night. Oh. Uh, the the train that is the Kansas City Chiefs keeps rolling along. They are 7-0, and they are hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucks, they are your classic roller coaster team in the NFL, up and down and everything else. It's typical Baker Mayfield, right? He's going to pass for 500 yards and five touchdowns one oh. week, and he's going to come back with three picks yep. and two touchdowns the next. I was just going to say, three yeah. picks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. This line opened up at eight and a half. It's still pretty much sitting there. Uh, you're seeing a lot of uh, nines. Uh, your Chiefs are nine-point favorites at home. Chiefs haven't been covering all that much, you know. Well, actually, they as a team they have. I'm, I'm, I was alluding to Patrick Mahomes being one of the leaders in the NFL in interceptions. Mm. He has nine picks compared to eight touchdowns, but it doesn't matter. The Chiefs always cover and they always win. The Chiefs, they, they are winning on the field. They're winning off the field. We got ripped off. The Kelsey brothers <laughs> just won sexiest podcast host of the year. What uh, People Magazine. Uh, they were just awarded this yesterday. Oh, well, I got ours in late. WTL got in late. That's what happened. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're going to have to wait until right. next year before we collect it. But, I was going to okay. say, that's just wild <laughs> that the Kelsey brothers won that. But yeah, the Chiefs, they, they're they the team that has nothing that they're incredible at, Yeah, but they won't lose, mm-hmm. right? It's like yep. they don't know how to lose. They're yep. the defending champs. They 
They're mm-hmm. uh, there's nothing scary about them. Like they're no. in my, you know, I'm a Chargers fan. I'm I'm they're in our division, and I'm like sitting here looking at it, going, "There's no chance what's we don't win here? this division." Yeah, what's going on? Nah, yeah, Chiefs can't lose, and they're not going to lose this one either. It's no, <laughs> it's wild. Uh, Tampa Bay is too much of an up and down team, kind of yeah. like I was saying, kind of your your classic roller coaster. And I really like Baker Mayfield, but they're on a two game losing streak right now. I don't think uh, going to Arrowhead Stadium is a place to get right. Uh, at a night game, Monday night, all those things. And that's another thing that, you know, I don't, I try not to put a lot of uh, uh, stock into, but when it becomes more in a trend, yeah. Kansas City performs in prime time. Yeah. Ask I, Joe Burrow, ask the Bengals, exactly. you know. Yeah. I, I wish I knew if Baker Mayfield was going to have a Zen in, you Ooh. know, ahead of the game. <laughs> he probably, because he might do two. That's the thing. If I knew <laughs> he was going to have a Zen in, and you know, and what one is, is a Spearman, is it Wintergreen? If I knew mm. ahead of the game, it might change kind of my perception on his performance, but since I don't know, uh, yeah, I like the Chiefs to win this game. I yeah. don't like them necessarily to cover that nine. That's yeah, insane. Yeah, especially the stat you were just giving us during the Colts Vikings game that every game's you know within a you know three or whatever. Well, um, and Chiefs have been making a living out of that this year. Yes, they have. You know, they they I say only they only beat the Raiders by seven. Yeah. You know, so uh, and I think the Bucks are significantly better than the Las Vegas uh, Raiders. I really do. Even though that was on the road, you know, so you can see where the odds makers get this line. And to the bookies' credit, it has been bet up from eight and a half. So you're going against the public money here. Right, that's Harrison Bucker seems to be the star of this team. Yeah, <laughs> am, I, am I wrong? Well, yeah, here? yeah, yeah, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> you know, not just uh, on the performance on the field, but he's just somebody that everyone's been talking about mm-hmm. since the off season. Um, you know, I like him being the performer here yeah. and uh, winning the game for him. But all wild. right, but yeah, but not by nine. So if I'm reading you right, real quick, the total forty five and a half really hasn't moved much throughout the week up to this point. You like the under? I like the under. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the under is solid as well. Yep. Well, that'll about do it for us this week, folks. Be sure to follow us on ESPN Tri-City Radio and their Facebook page. We're also on X, WTL underscore podcast or something like that. Uh, We're also on YouTube. That's been fun getting the shorts going, long long, uh, feature length videos, all that stuff. You're going to be featured on those YouTube videos this week, Jeremy. Oh, man. I'm going to be a star. And I got to thank you, Jeremy, for hopping on with us once again. We haven't seen you since uh, preseason football, NFL. preseason, yeah. Things have been going pretty good. You nailed it with your uh, lad uh, McConkey pick. You know the guy's a stud. Yeah. He's got a Georgia name Bulldog, that right? you'll never forget. Yeah, mm-hmm. incredible. But. Where where can folks find you and find the bottom five podcast? So you can find the bottom five podcast. It's the reverse power rankings <laughs> NFL every single week. Anywhere you find your podcast, also find me every single week. The Laugh with Me podcast, just jokes galore. It's good stuff. For Jeremy Odom, I'm Andy Classen. Thank you for listening. This has been. WTL.